member of my family of love is David Albritton. God bless you, David Albritton. Um, there are many things, David, that I could say about you, but I won't turn you loose in just a minute. But one of the favorite things is uh, I don't like to usually start with what somebody did uh, in writing, but I am here, America Say Jesus, because I was a part of that. Uh, and, and the whole premise of your life as an evangelist is, uh, is let's say Jesus, let's follow Jesus, let's share Jesus. Uh, could you go back and tell me why you're an evangelist? When I was in high school, they called me John the Baptist, and when I wore white shoes, they called me Pat Boone. But uh, I was always witnessing for Jesus. I developed yeah. a close relationship with Jesus. I fell in love with Jesus, actually, what happened. I fell in love with Christ. I wanted my friends to know about Jesus. I never wanted to be a preacher. I wanted to be a pro basketball player, and I, I was able to score almost 35 points a game in college with just one eye. But I was always, wow. I was always witnessing for Jesus Christ. And uh, you know, today it's politically incorrect to say Jesus. You know, you can say God once in a while, but they're trying to take Jesus out of Christmas, Jesus out of public prayers. Uh, they don't want to talk about the resurrection Jesus. Talk about the, you know, the bunny eggs or whatever. But I'm telling you. Jesus is what Christianity is all about. Amen. And, Amen. And, uh, Amen. Uh, the book, the book, America Say Jesus, uh, don't mean to talk about that, but this book, America Say Jesus, God spoke to me one day, I was praying, and he said, I want you to study the name of Jesus in the scripture, study it, why his name is so important. It took me two years to do that. And then he said, study the name of Jesus in American history, which I also did. And you'll find God, and a lot of people talk about God, but what they don't realize is Supreme Court Justice, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, congressmen, senators, presidents, talked about Jesus all the way from the beginning of our country. And, uh, and so people are trying to rewrite history. So I wrote that book, America Say Jesus, and why we need to say Jesus Christ. There's no other name mm. given among men Amen. whereby we must be saved. Amen. 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 Oh, uh, you know, David, I, I, when, as I've carried the cross around the world, uh, many times when I'm tired, I start saying Jesus mm. with every step. I'll just say Jesus, 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 Jesus. And it gets stronger yeah. and stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah. I mean, there, there, there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there, you know, you're absolutely right. And uh, you've been such an inspiration to me. Uh, it's kind of family night, but you and Denise and Sophia, I mean, you guys have all been dear friends, and we just love you, and you've inspired me in my uh, witnessing. I remember I was asked to go to a high school and give an anti-drug speech, and the principal met me uh, before the speech, and he says, now, this is uh, a secular high school. We have, you know, people from different religions, and we don't want to offend anybody. So, uh, you know, you can say God two or three times. That's permissible, but don't say the name. And uh, I said, what name? He said, you know the name. Don't say the name. I said, what name are you talking about? He said, you know. Um, I said, are, are you talking about Jesus? He said, yeah, don't say that. And, uh, I, and I said, well, I'll do the best I can. And, <laughs> and I, I remember going out there and I said, you know, now don't take drugs, you know. And I started giving statistics why they shouldn't do drugs and everything. And no one was paying any attention. The kids heard that. And, uh, and suddenly I just quit talking and I started crying. And uh, all those kids, 2,000 students, just started looking at me while I was crying. And I said, I just can't help it, but I just got to tell you, I love you, and Jesus loves you. And kids start crying all over that auditorium. Mm. And I talked for 15 minutes, almost at a whisper, and I said, if you would like to receive Jesus, just come forward. Well, the whole school came down and get saved. Uh, kids, uh, kids were throwing their, uh, they were throwing their drugs away. They were, they were throwing the drugs away out on the gym floor. Uh, the principal interrupted after I, I led everyone in sinner's prayer first and he, he stopped me he said into my office he got ticked off he he took me to his office and he said that's terrible what you're doing and uh, this is a public high school and he said you know I'm a deacon at such and such church and uh, and he said you know you're gonna go over to that junior high and speak I'm calling that principal I'm gonna tell him what you did here and I'm gonna tell him not to let you speak and I said well you know um, we're both going to face God someday, and you mm. do what you think you need to do, and right. I'll do what I think I need to Amen. do. And, Amen. Amen. Uh, so uh, yeah. I, uh, I went, 
I went over to I went over to that junior high, and the principal met me, and he said the high school principal just told me that you, know, you preached the gospel and gave an altar call at the assembly there. He said, "Is that true?" And I said, "Yes, sir." He said, "If I let you speak at my school, are you going to do the same thing?" I said, "Probably." <laughs> and uh, he said, "You know, uh, I'm not a Christian, but if your Jesus could get my kids off drugs and give them peace and purpose in their life, I don't care what you say." Hey, and, uh, man! It was powerful. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, what, what I like about you, author, is they said you can't walk the cross in North Korea. You can't walk the cross in some Muslim countries, you know, the wall and all this. And you just said, you know, Jesus gave the green light. And, <laughs> and I found that way mm -hmm. in witnessing. Mm -hmm. um, I share Jesus everywhere. And I see principals getting saved, doctors getting saved, attorneys getting saved. Uh, I was down in Florida, we used to live down there, and I was actually uh, fishing off a little private dock. I want to be left alone. A man pulls up in a brand new boat, huge boat, starts carrying on this conversation with me, parks his boat 10 feet from me. So I started telling him about Jesus. I figured he'd probably leave and I can be by myself. And, uh, but anyway, he just started asking me all kinds of questions about Jesus. Two and a half hours, I answer that guy's questions. I led him to Christ. He's weeping. He's crying. And I said, by the way, what do you do? And he says, I'm attorney. And he was a liberal Democrat who was just elected attorney general in one of the big southern states in the United States of America. And he said, I always want to know about Jesus Christ. And he was gloriously born again. Amen. So there's no, Amen. There's no limit. There's no limit to what we can do. That's right. Uh, David, I know that, um, uh, I mean, we're friends. We've been on the streets together, our mm. families. We've stood together through thick and thin. Yeah. And, um, but I know that God put a, a burden of a message, uh, a, a mission for you. And we only have a few minutes, but I want you to be able to share mm. that okay. which the Lord put on your heart okay. uh, for you to say. Okay, author, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, we both have a burden for souls, and we all ask every day, God, give me a greater concern for souls, a greater love for humanity. Give me greater insight and wisdom how to win souls. And I'm always praying that. I know you are. We, we just want to reach more people. And years ago, I was seeking God. I said, Lord, I read your word. I study your word. I have a burden for souls. But God, if you can show me something I haven't seen yet, that just break my heart for souls. Lynn and I were preaching in Phoenix, Arizona, and they put us in a motel. And I went to sleep that night, and uh, I had an out-of-body experience. I, I don't know how to explain it, uh, but I left my body. And the trumpet, I was in a dream actually, I was dreaming, but the trumpet of the Lord sounded and I went to heaven in the rapture. You know, the Bible says in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, uh, we're going to be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And, and the rapture took place and I found myself in heaven instantly. And when I got to heaven, there was so much happiness and so much joy. And uh, I've been to some parties down here on this planet, but I've never seen so much joy. I've never seen so much happiness. People are laughing and hugging, welcoming uh, loved ones you know, who were saved into heaven. And it was just a massive party of joy. I, I don't know how to describe it. And I'm just about ready to join in the party. And God the Father speaks to me and he says, do you see the joy that's in heaven? I said, oh yes, Lord. I, it's so wonderful, God. I'm so glad I'm here. I just can't wait to be a part of this. And God said, well, in a minute, I'll let you. But he said, first of all, he said, I'm going to give you an angel. And I want you to go back to the earth to interview people that were left behind. And I said, God, I don't want to go. I want to stay here. And he says, no, I want you to go back to the earth and interview people that missed the rapture, that were left behind. And this angel came and uh, escorted me back to planet Earth. I found myself in an automobile with this angel going through the darkness of a large city. And it was demonic darkness, author. It wasn't like light darkness. When Christians are gone, evil's going to take over this planet like the world has never known before. And it was so dark, it was so black and so demonic, you, you could just sense it in the air. And the angel and I were in an automobile, and we pulled the car over and went into this large building. It was about 50 stories tall, all glass fixture, very modern. We walked in the front door, and I looked to the left. There are about 30, 35 desks that were empty, once occupied by Christians, but had left and gone in the rapture. I looked over, and there's one man at the far right behind a taller desk by himself. The angel and I went over to this man. He's about 55 years old, and uh, I said... Uh, can you tell me where everyone is? I see all the people are gone. 
and he looked at me and I've seen people who went through divorce, I've seen people, uh, a dad who lost a son through suicide, I've seen a lot of horrifying, helpless looks on people's accountants. But author, I've never seen a sadder look on a man's face, a more destitute look in my life. And I said, where's everyone at? He put his head down and he said, I am nothing, I have nothing, I'll never be anything, I'm going to hell. And I wanted to reach out and lead him to the Lord, but I couldn't, he'd already taken the mark of the beast. I looked at this man and he muttered again, do you understand? He kept saying this to me, do you understand? I'm going to hell. And the, the, the moment, the reality of that hit me in the dream. This man is literally going to hell. He kept saying, do you understand? I'm going to hell. I have nothing. Never be anything. He said, I own this building, but it's not worth 10 cents to me. He reached down, pulled out the keys of the building. He said, I'll give you the building. He said, I'm going to hell. And I said, look, I, I've already been to heaven. I, I don't need your building. He walked me back, the angel and I, back to the front door. I looked at this sad man. I said, sir, evidently you worked with a lot of Christians. Did any of them ever tell you how you could be saved? He put his head down for a moment and he said, no, I heard them say praise the Lord once in a while, but not one of them ever told me how to be saved. And God spoke to me in a dream. He said, the Christians that fail to warn the wicked will uh, be judged, but they don't lose their salvation. But it's a serious business with God that the, our hands are pure from the blood of all men. David said, my, my hands are pure from the blood of all men. Paul said, my hands are pure from the blood of all men. In other words, when someone stands in a judgment, they won't be able to say, you know, I was with David Albert, but he never witnessed to me. Mm. You say, that, I mean, if you know someone's dying and going to hell and you don't do anything, God said, those Christians are responsible. And, and I went and got in the car with that angel and that darkness was so horrific. And we went down the road and we saw three uh, young men hitchhiking on the side of the road. I got out with the angel and facing these three young men. And while I was facing them, the young man in the middle had a dream that he went to hell. And God sent me to hell with him. And where I was in hell, the fire was on the outside burning in. It was inside burning out. And the fire had been my brain burning out. And I was screaming to die, but I couldn't die. And it'd get my eyes, my face, my throat, all the way through my body. And I was screaming to die. I wanted to die. The pain was so severe, but I couldn't die. And I came out of that dream, standing on the side of the road. The three young men fell on their knees and started crying, crying. They're going to hell. And I said, you're going to hell because you rejected the blood of Jesus and God said there were three young men raised in church that rejected the blood of Jesus. Can you tell us how to receive Christ right now? Well, Jesus Christ comes in by faith and you know, repentance means you say, God, I'm sorry. You may not understand everything, but you understand that you've sinned and the Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. One lie is a sin. You know you've sinned, but here's the thing. Jesus Christ will forgive you. He'll come into your life. He'll save you right now. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to perish. You can be born again. You can be changed. Old things pass away and all things become new. And it begins with Jesus. And just say this with me right now. Just say Jesus. Just Jesus. say Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord say Jesus. God forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry Jesus. I'm sorry Jesus. Come into my life and save me. Save me. Just receive him by faith. Say Jesus come in my life. Jesus, come in my life. And you can call an, an, a, a prayer warrior right here, someone who will pray with you at TBN, and they'll give you some literature. But I love you, and uh, we're going to have a big invasion in London 2012. Thousands of Christians with Dr. Mings were going to witness all over London during the Olympics. That's it's fantastic. Exciting. Take and, uh, Jesus there. And yeah. people can find out uh, by looking at your website, yeah. they can make contact with that Olympic outreach. Yeah. And you pastor a church in Dallas? Yeah, the Winter's Edge. We just started it. In, from February to now, we've already seen over 450 born again, but we're just getting started. And I just want to say this to all the pastors. Win souls. Go for it. Time is short. I want to say to everyone, get out on the streets. Go to the highways, the hedges. Compel them to come in. Let's win the world. Let's take America back for Jesus Christ. And to hey. everyone, Amen. Say David. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I love, love you, you David. I love you. <laughs> and your wonderful wife, Linda.